morning, everybody. Welcome aboard the Flora. My name is Lorenz. I'll be your captain and storyteller on today's voyage to Storybook Land. So, for your safety, remain seated, keeping your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the boat at all times. Parents, please be sure to keep an eye on your little ones as we wouldn't want our story taking any unexpected turns. Now, when most people venture out into the great white somewhere, they often do so through the pages of a really good book. Today, we are about to enter through the hungry jaws of Monstro the Whale. The same whale who swallowed our friends Pinocchio and Geppetto, but Hakuna Matata, everybody, it means no worries. Our tale begins where the whale's tale ends, and he takes us into a magical place called Storybook Land. Now, if you thought Monstro was scary, just wait until you meet the big, bad wolf coming up on the left-hand side of the canal. He's always after those three little pigs who live on the island across the way in a house made of straw, a house made of sticks, and a house made of 100% guaranteed wolf-proof bricks. Our story takes a curiouser and curiouser turn as we approach the quaint English village of a little girl named Alice, where on one golden afternoon she followed the white rabbit down, down, down the rabbit hole into Wonderland, where she stumbled upon a very merry birthday party. But if that's not your cup of tea, then think of a wonderful thought, and on the second star to our right is London Park, where Peter Pan took Wendy, John, and Michael Darling on a flight to Neverland with a little bit of faith, trust, and pixie dust. One jumps ahead across the canal is the majestic city of Agrabah, where a street rat named Aladdin stole the heart of a princess named Jasmine. Though the evil Jafar stood in their way with a little bit of help from their friends, they were able to defeat him, and now they live in the Sultan's palace. Which of course means that in Agrabah, true love blooms forever, just like the flowers on the archways that Aladdin and Princess Jasmine soared over, sideways, and under on their magic carpet ride to a whole new world. Now all good stories have their moments of love and their moments of light, but sometimes they go to some pretty dark places too, just like the Cave of Wonders. Legend has it it's home to a genie with phenomenal cosmic power who will grant three wishes to the diamond in the rough. So let's go inside, make a wish, and see if it comes true. It's a now, if you made a wish for a safe place to stay, then on the right-hand side you'll find the cozy forest cottage of the Seven Dwarves, just like Snow White did as she fled the evil queen. If you look closely, you can see the doors behind it. If you listen closely, you can hear Snow White whistle while she works. And on the other side of the canal, as our friend Casey Jr. passes through, Cinderella made a wish to go to the ball, even though Lady Tremaine forbade it. But with the help of the fairy godmother, Cinderella was able to attend. Unfortunately, as you can see up on the bridge, fairy godmother's magic ran out at midnight, but thankfully true love lasts forever. Prince Charming was able to find the owner of the glass slipper, and now he and Cinderella live in the castle on the hill. Cinderella taught us that a dream is a wish your heart makes, and here at Storybook Land, dreams do come true. Whether those are dreams of falling in love, or falling asleep in a patchwork quilt of flowers like the one on our left, inspired by the 1933 Silly Symphony cartoon, Follow by Land. All of the plants and flowers inside the quilt, as well as around Storybook Land, are real, and thanks to Tinkerbell's magic, they will never, ever have to grow up. Which is just one of many reasons why Storybook Land was considered a favorite of our founder, Walt Disney. Those are cool. Those are Straight ahead is the stately Toad Hall with its seven chimneys, but only one fireplace, home to J. Thaddeus Toad, or as you may know him, Mr. Toad. But it looks like he's not home right now, which must mean that he's off on a wild ride to nowhere in particular. And just beyond Toad Hall, venturing into the unknown, is the icy kingdom of Arendelle, where the sisters Anna and Elsa discovered something more powerful than Elsa's ice magic, an act of true love. And just up ahead is the humble alpine village of Geppetto the Woodcarver, where he wished upon a star for his puppet Pinocchio to become a real boy. The Blue Fairy granted that wish, and Pinocchio let his conscience be his guide and rescued his father from Monster the Whale. And before we leave Arendelle, if anybody needs anything, I hear that our friend Wandering Oaken on our left-hand side is having a big summer blowout. Our 
final chapter takes us to Prince Eric's castle where a little mermaid named Ariel wished her human legs to walk on land as part of our world. Though she left her friends and family behind under the sea to our left, they knew she was living her happily ever after. This brings our story to a happy ending as we return to the dock. Once again, I have been Captain Lorenz, and on behalf of all of our storytellers, thanks for joining us today. We hope you have a fantastic rest of your day here at Disneyland, and that it's a story worth telling. Hopefully, we'll see you real soon, and you reach out and find your very own happily ever after.